You know Khabib as well as anyone. You're the last guy to fight him. Who has a better chance of beating him, in your opinion? Tony, Gaethje, or neither? I think Gaethje does. I've really? said it since the beginning, yeah. Why? I just think the wrestling pedigree... Dude, look. I'm not just trying to be a dick here or talk bad about these guys, but if... Uh, I thought Tony... This was a while back. I thought Danny Castillo beat Tony. I thought oh. Danny won that fight. Mm. I thought he out-wrestled him. Uh, if Kevin Lee and Danny Castillo are putting you on your back at will, dude, Khabib is going to do that whenever he wants i promise you you know i i know this and the people saying tony's gonna damage khabib and, and you, dude to get a stoppage from your back with elbows it, it could happen but it's gonna be so tough the cut's gonna have to be perfect you know and, and the submission off your back against khabib from from guard or something i just don't see that happening you know maybe in a scramble you can catch him in something funky but but if he's taking you down and, and he's in your guard or he's on top of you submitting him from your back i just don't see it happening man so what can Not, you do he can stop the wrestling. He can use his wrestling to stop Khabib's wrestling, get him tired down, and throw those crazy shots and land something. That's what I think could happen. Would you suggest Tony is overrated? No. I, okay. I think he's solid. I think uh, his will and his heart and his belief in himself is unmatched. And a lot of that, a lot of fighting is that. Um, Skill-wise, I think he makes a lot of mistakes. I, I, uh, I don't know how it hasn't you know caught up to him or somebody hasn't capitalized on his his awkward footwork and his chin up in the air you know guys have heard him before nobody's put him away um i, I just think he is a good fighter for sure you don't you don't get on streaks like that and beat the guys he's beaten by not being a good fighter the guy's a great fighter but uh i just think stylistically it's not a good fight i think Khabib beats him up man i think he gets on top of him takes him down at will and grinds on him and just to be clear, are you picking Justin over Tony, or do you think Justin would have a legit chance of beating Khabib? I think... Dude, I like Justin in both fights. Really? Wow. Yeah, I do. Wow. I do. Fascinating. Um, Listen, if, if, if guys are hurting you and dropping you, you know, if Gaethje gets a hold of you, he's going to stop you, I think. You know, that's just what I think, you know. 
That's MMA, my MMA opinion, which means yeah. nothing in the world. Yeah. But this is what I want to ask you, not so much about the card itself, but what about what happened on Friday, DC? Uh, the card wasn't happening April 18th, right? We know that it didn't happen. Khabib, Tony, Tony, Justin, DC. Tony Ferguson actually cuts weight and makes weight for a fight that is not happening. Mm. How crazy is this? Let me tell you something, Helwani. Let me <laughs> tell you something, Helwani. Tony Ferguson, different cat, right? But Tony Ferguson stepping on the scale at 155, that tells you how disciplined this man is. That How disciplined is Tony Ferguson to get all the way down to the championship weight with nothing to gain? That is a, a look, that's a boss move. I know Tony and I don't have the best relationship, but that is a boss move in a but sense that, thing. why? Why? It, you didn't have to do it. But here, Why? Is it a no, boss move if you ask why? It is, it is a boss move because it's it's harder to do something it's harder to do something when there is no reward at the end. Tony was going to get on that weight, make that weight, suffer through the entire weight cut, and then go back to training. He did it just to show how disciplined and how in control of the entire situation he is. Everybody made a big deal about whether or not Habib could make weight, whether or not Gaethje was going to be okay to make weight in four weeks. Remember, through all this, Tony Ferguson has had to continue to train continue to prepare continue to monitor and manage weight he has done that to a t even to the point that a week after the fight was called off he still was able to just step on the scale that's crazy that is actually crazy because it shows the discipline most guys when they hear a fight is off they run to the nearest restaurant that serves their favorite food tony ferguson stayed the course and that tells me that come may 18th may 9th that dude is dangerous for anybody because he is so disciplined and so in tune with himself right now going into this fight. He he went through quarantine and never got off track. It's crazy. But but isn't there something to be said for the fact that he's fighting in three weeks? Why go through a weight cut? You know, go through all that suffering. He weighed 179 pounds on Monday. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're trying to say, but like from an actual strategy standpoint, from a health and safety standpoint, could you make the case that maybe this wasn't a smart move? Like, what's the no, payoff? No, he wasn't getting paid for you it. You can't. You can't. I used to have the biggest, and, and I used to have the biggest issues with my when I started going to two hundred five. Because remember, at the Olympics, my kidneys shut down, so I was so afraid if I wasn't able to make the weight that I started doing these test weight cuts. And three weeks before the fight, I used to get to two hundred eight, two hundred nine. I was like, I needed to get low, and then I would just put the weight back on. And then the following week, I would get a little bit lower and I would put the weight back on. And then I would get down the weight. That was when I was afraid that I couldn't make the weight. Once the end, when I realized I could do it and I could suck the weight off, I didn't do those. And I weren't, wasn't as committed to doing those. But every time I did that, even though I put the weight back on, I was still like a few pounds lighter than I was going into it. And then my weight just kept dropping. And I believe now that Tony's come all the way down you know, on Saturday morning, he probably weighed 175 pounds, right? He probably weighed 175 after drinking as much as he wanted, eating as much as he wanted, but he didn't weigh 179. Do you understand? Now he's four pounds lighter as he's waking up, getting ready to go back into the weight cut. So it it, 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 it benefits him in that sense that now he's got four pounds less to lose. He's going to make weight easier this time. But I think more than anything, it speaks to the mental toughness of Tony Ferguson. Mm -hmm. That, that's really what that is. Now, I don't think anyone should question that. And I believe that if they do, it's misguided. It's very misguided because dude, dude did something that most fighters won't do. And I'm telling you this right now. Like, I love Habib. But he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't make the weight for nothing. He wouldn't suffer through that for no reason. Conor McGregor, he would not suffer through that for no reason. Conor was, Conor was willing to say, hey. Great job, Tony. Put the other guy on the scale, but he wouldn't have done that himself. He wouldn't have gone down to weight for nothing. Uh, all your favorite fighters, Israel Asanya, even the guy that doesn't cut that much weight, wouldn't suck himself all the way down to scratch for no reason because mentally it's so tough to do that. Guys don't do that, and Tony Ferguson just did that. That's a big deal.